Good afternoon. Welcome to you, all of you here in the Shirley Beggs Ballroom at the Radigan Student Center and to friends of Wichita State University watching live stream or later on video. I'm Rick Muma, Provost of Wichita State, and I'm pleased to welcome you to this celebration of life honoring President John Bardo. He became president in July 2012 and served until his death March 12, 2019. In recognition of Dr. Bardo's dedicated and caring service to the WSU community, the Faculty Senate has awarded Dr. Bardo the Distinguished Service Faculty Award. The Faculty Senate felt his, he exemplified all the characteristics needed for this award, including notable efforts to connect the university and the community, and a long-term commitment to WSU through extensive service. Dr. Bardo often said he loved Wichita State and Wichita and that really began with his love of his wife, Deborah Davis, whom he met in Neff Hall. Mrs. Bardo is here today with her family. Deborah is very much a part of John's work, from editing his academic writing to sharing many evenings and weekends at university events. It's her dedicated work that we would like to also recognize today. It is my pleasure to announce that the Division of Academic Affairs has awarded Mrs. Bardo emeritus status. Please join current Faculty Senate President Betty Smith Campbell and President-elect Jeff Jarman in thanking Deborah for all she has done, her son Christopher, her father Wayne, her sisters Val and Cindy, Val's spouse Kathy and Gretchen, who's Christopher's partner, and many friends that have given to John and Wichita State. Over the next era, you'll have a chance to hear in person and on video from dozens of people who knew President Bardo, ranging from some of his oldest friends still on campus to some who only met him in the past few years. But all of us were changed by knowing him. Remembering this celebration as, an, as not a, a, a memorial service, but a celebration. You may cry, but John would also want you to laugh and enjoy each other's company. Afterwards, we'll, we'll assemble, re reassemble downstairs on the first floor of the RSC for his favorite type of event, an ice cream social. Today's program will move the way John Bardo always liked to move, swiftly. Trust me, I know this. <laughs> first, you'll hear from a person at his side throughout his presidency, Chief of Staff Andy Schlapp, then from President Bardo himself. Remember that the mission in our university and our strategic plan is to be an essential education, educational, cultural, and economic driver for Kansas and the greater public good. In that spirit, Sherry Utash will talk about education, Shirley Lefevre and Bobby Berry about culture, John Tomlin about economic development, and many others on video talking about President Bardo's impact in each of these areas. Interim President Andy Tompkins will talk with you about his continuing vision and mission begun under Dr. Bardo. Then as appropriate, Dr. Bardo will end the program in his own words in a style uniquely his. We all know how dedicated Dr. Bardo was to wanting to see positive change quickly. Andy Schlapp, one of John's closest advisors and friends, learned this early in their time together. I remember sitting in the dining hall with Dr. Bardo and Greg Marshall came up with Landry Shamet and said to him, this place is amazing. And for the first time ever, we're bringing recruits on campus and we bring them here first. And, and this is Landry Shamet. He's the number 88th recruit in the country, highest recruit we've ever had. And we talked to Landry Shamet for a while. And Greg said to John, this is amazing. You pulled this off, thank you. And then Todd Butler came over with a couple of recruits and said, this is the place to be. 
And then two of our older faculty members who were very suspect came over and said, this has changed the face of the university forever, and thank you so much for doing it. I looked over at John, and he's almost in tears, and I thought to myself, what a special moment to be able to share this with John. He's changed this university forever. I went back to my office, and I started working, and I'm typing away, and John came in and sat down behind me, and he didn't say anything, and I kept working, and he didn't say anything, and I finally turned around, and I said, what's up? And he goes, what are we doing? What are we doing? And I said, what do you mean? He goes, what are we doing? Are we doing anything for this university? And I was like, were you not just with me at lunch when all these people came up and said how you changed this university forever? And he goes, yeah, I get that. But what are we doing? And that's really the drive of John Bardo. He was never satisfied. He was always looking forward. I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to be here today to be back at this university that Deborah and I both love so dearly, and to be part of this wonderful community and back with our family. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much <laughs> for being here today and for taking part in this ceremony. And I think back on the folks who hired me here when I was a pretty green 24-year-old who uh, really didn't know much about anything, uh, but they gave me a chance. And for that, I will be eternally grateful and it really is humbling to be counted among the greats of this university, Morrison, Corbin, Alberg, and Bakes. As John said, his roots at Wichita State began when he was 24 years old, freshly minted assistant professor of sociology just out of his doctoral program at Ohio State. His academic interest revolved around the relationships between higher education, the economy, and quality of life in urban areas. He pursued these interests throughout his career. During his first years at Wichita State, he made lifetime friends, including Ron Matson, Charlie Birdsell, Rob, Bob Ross, Dean and Esther Headley, and Mark Glazer. Picture the lean, dark-haired, young sociology professor, John Bardo. I met John in 1973 when he came up to my office and uh, asked me, I hear you know something about multivariate stuff. And I told him yes. And uh, we pretty much were friends ever since. And the next day you'd be answering a phone call on Saturday morning saying, you know, Mark, I looked out there and there's a lot of cars stuck on um, Kellogg from snow, last night's snow, and uh, we need to do something about that. So why don't you call up Mike Lohr and a couple of the other students and come meet me, and we'll see if we can do something about that. So we spent the day pushing cars out of the snow um, uh, that were stuck on uh, Kellogg. He wasn't afraid of anything. Yeah, and I can remember one time we were at a conference in Tulsa. We had about 30 people wanting to go out to eat. And I was fretting about where we could go with 30 people. He just said, come on, let's go. And we went, and he pranced us into a little Italian restaurant. There was no one in there and said, you can take 30 people, can't you? Well, they did. And, uh, you know, that was just the way he did things. He always kind of ran things. During his inauguration, um, I was president-elect of the faculty senate at that time, and I remember him speaking about how excited he was to be able to rejoin the faculty of Wichita State University, having been a member of the faculty many, many years ago. <laughs> um, he was so excited to receive the presidential medallion, and uh, I remember that very clearly, even though that was one of the first times that I had uh, had an opportunity to really work with him very closely. I remember a comment that reflected John's humility and sense of history that he made after about a year on the WSU job. I have finally been able to stop worrying if the decision I just made would meet with prior president Clark Alberg's approval. When I think about being a student on campus at Wichita State University 10 years ago, you could definitely go around and, and do the things you would typically do as a student. You could go to Hippodrome, you could go to your fraternity house, 
you could go to the union. But today what I see is students that are excited to be a part of the campus community. They're excited to engage industry, to engage our broader Wichita community. And that is something that I think makes Wichita a destination campus to go to, something that makes us stand out as a center for higher education and campus that nobody else has. Um, there was a time where you could walk through our campus and you'd see t-shirts from all types of, of higher ed institutions, both locally and um, nationally. And, and now if you count, nine out of 10 of those are gonna say woo shock on them or, or shocker nation. And so I think um, from the student perspective, the, the amount of pride that students have, um, the, the, my own children have a, a sense of pride about attending Wichita State that I don't know would have been there 10 years ago. Um, and, and the entrepreneurialism that, that everyone has a place in the ecosystem that he helped create here at Wichita State, um, where people have an opportunity to engage in different ways and build things that are going to be significant and substantial. In the next 10 years, this campus will evolve into something really big. The history has already been laid, the foundation. Give it the next decade, people will not even know that this campus looked the way it did in 2015. We have moved forward. He's moved us forward to be successful. Now we will start the pipeline with the jobs, the community, WSU Tech. I mean, it's so much that he's given us that the history itself, if they were to give him a Wikipedia page, it would be pages. So we have witnessed an amazing transformation. Um, and I think back as I'm a professor now, but as a student, hanging around John Bardo's office. There were several of us, and we were always waiting for, waiting for the next adventure. One of Dr. Bardo's first important acts as president was to help the university launch its first strategic planning process. From that process came the vision, mission, values, and goals that guide us today. Everything Dr. Bardo did was to advance the strategic plan. He wanted us to implement it together to enlarge WSU's role as an educational, cultural, and economic driver for Kansas and the greater public good. The first pillar of our mission is to be an essential educational driver. In each of the coming segments, you'll see excerpts of video interviews talking about Dr. Bardo's contributions, followed by speakers, and after the next video, Sherry Utash, president of WSU Tech, and Vice President of Workforce Development for Wichita State will speak about education. Innovation Campus uh, probably could not be duplicated in a lot of our universities. We're very fortunate to have it here at uh, Wichita where we have a lot of strong businesses uh, that uh, can work so hand in hand with the university that uh, as I walk through the Innovation Campus, I, I see a a university of, not of today but of tomorrow. President Bardo understood that that education needs to change and that higher education uh, is changing and certainly he did not want Wichita State University left behind but rather he wanted to be in front of the pack and he was. We have been able to, thanks to John's support, we have been able to expand into the area of technology and art game design, animation, audio production, and so forth, and Shocker Studios. Dr. Bardo would always accommodate his calendar, uh, where if a coach wanted him to meet with a prospective student athlete and their family or parents, he would always uh, make time to do that, and did on many, many occasions. Uh, and I think the applied learning piece has been a significant change, as our focus has changed in making sure that students not only have the, the, the theory, but they also can apply those theories in a work setting. Um, I think that's a significant change. I have a chemistry degree that I never used because I didn't know what to do with it. Um, I would argue that chemistry students today know what to do with those degrees. He inspired the faculty to be really ambitious about what it means to have honors on this campus, including turning over some of that work of designing the education to the students. And that's really the impact that he, that he had uh, in many ways in general, was to light that spark and then to, to give people the permission to dream in the direction that they wanted to dream. He talked a lot about innovation campus, but he also talked about innovation mindsets. 
And by that, I think he meant that we had to think differently about the way we approach education and really thinking about societal trends, our changing student demographics, and what is our responsibility to those students that are coming to us today and tomorrow from the little things like changing the way we teach our classes to the, the bigger things like what businesses come to campus and how do we provide opportunities for our students and our faculty. So John's vision uh, on workforce development was so comprehensive uh, and, and much broader than many uh, that are serving in the president's role. Uh, I think about the, the innovation campus where students would have applied learning experiences while they were completing their baccalaureate degrees. And then, and then even more than that, the affiliation with Wichita uh, Area Technical College where now WSU Tech is affiliated with Wichita State University, and really that's become a national story uh, on how they leveraged the strengths, two partners leveraged their strengths, and, and really uh, it's a juggernaut. And as he used to like to say, from GED to PhD, it was kind of the mantra of the, the feasibility study is what do we need to do to ensure that we can give equal access to students in this area to higher education. And I do believe that it succeeded because we had two individuals at the very top of both of those institutions that believed so strongly that this was the right thing for each institution and that merger would make both of them stronger. And uh, I think that's proven out. I think we see the results uh, of that uh, vision and direction and uh, uh, high compliments to uh, the way it's worked. So good afternoon. What an honor to celebrate the life of John Bardo today. John Bardo was a teacher. He was an innovator, a scholar, a visionary, an entrepreneur, and a collaborator that was incredibly courageous and bold. And you take all of those qualities together and accompany them with, he had an incredible passion and he was an intelligent risk taker. To me, he was a consummate, lifelong learner. He had the incredible appetite and desire to read, to learn, and to understand. Every morning, he had a reading routine, and many of us in this room received emails from him on a daily basis, encouraging us to read and to learn and to understand. He was an advocate for education at every level, and he believed in an educated populace which included a quality education for everyone. How often did we hear him say, access to education without quality is no bargain for anyone. His admiration for faculty was so affirming as he often spoke of the global class education students received at Wichita State University taught by world-class faculty. Dr. Bardo was a thought leader. He was a design thinker who was committed to transforming WSU into a student-centered, innovation-driven university. He believed WSU was the university of this city, and that drove his vision to create applied and interdisciplinary learning opportunities for students. His belief that research of the faculty informs students every day in their classrooms and that WSU is at the epicenter for our community for the development of human capital. These were hallmarks of his never ending quest to raise the university forward. The innovation campus was driven by his vision to create a place where students could work with faculty and businesses to create something new. He believed that students should learn not only how to know, but how to do. The dream of the Innovation Campus was to engage with business and industry, faculty and students, in a new way to move the university into the future. And he emphasized a public-private partnership not only on the 120 acres that used to be Brayburn Golf Course, but he wanted that to permeate through every aspect of WSU, transforming the entire enterprise into a student-centered and innovation-driven university. 
as a man who understood economic development and certainly understood disruptive modernization of higher education, he challenged all of us to transform the world through innovation, applied learning, entrepreneurship, and economic impact. When I started talking with him in 2015 about WATC and WSU coming together in some way, I had no idea that what I was about to enter would become one of the greatest highlights of my career. I worked with him for 30 months on this, and as we worked, our focus was always on students and on building a model that would serve business and industry and provide new and continued pathways for educational achievement. What we talked about was we dreamed of the future, but we kept our focus on students and our community. Dr. Barta would often say, and the video just said this, that what WSU and WSU Tech created was a continuum of GED to PhD for this community. One of my fondest memories of President Bardo was doing a video karaoke segment with him. And I will tell you that um, the day that we did it, I thought to myself, I don't know what I've just done, but he probably thinks I am the craziest person that ever walked this earth. Um, but he was a great sport, and um, so we, we started this video, uh, karaoke, to really talk to people about what was the importance of the affiliation. So we started in the parking lot at NCAT with a car that was broke down, and he pulled out his phone and he said, I've got this new Woober app, and so he Woobered it, and, and all of a sudden up drives Woo in a big SUV, and we, he jumps out, and President Bardo and I jump in, and I'm the driver, and he's on the shotgun side, and um, we start down Webb, and we get on 96, and probably going about 60 miles an hour, and we're having this great conversation back and forth, and there's GoPro cameras everywhere in this vehicle. I mean, they're everywhere. So we're on camera the entire time, and there's, there's all these cameras on us. And so we're, start, we're talking about the benefits of the affiliation and why is the affiliation important for students and for community and for each of our institutions. And um, as we talked about this and as we went along, then we broke into song on Sign, Sealed, Delivered, I'm Yours. <laughs> and I will tell you, it was a little tame and timid in the beginning. Um, he, I think he probably was looking at me like, whoa. Uh, anyway, so I... Um, so by the time we got to Morrison parking lot, though, I will tell you, we were both singing at the top of our lungs. We were laughing our heads off, and we were having a great time. And I share that with you because um, he loved life, and he had a great sense of humor, and um, he loved to laugh. And how many times when you were working on a project with him would he say, aren't we having fun? Isn't this fun? And I love that about him. So that is really one of my fondest memories. I don't know which one of us had the most fun, um, but I will tell you, I did call Lou Heldman the next morning and say, Lou, what in the world did I do yesterday? I feel like I need to go to his office with a paper sack over my head. He said, don't worry about it. He had fun. <laughs> so, um, you know, we worked for 30 months on this affiliation. Uh, and the, um, the economic success, um, one of the things he said about that was the economic success of this state is at the very heart of what WSU does and informs every decision we make. And I thought that quote was really good because it really embodied, I think, President Bardo. He also said about the affiliation, this is a natural partnership that ensures the state of Kansas remains competitive with its neighbors. And it's attractive to companies looking to explore new approaches to innovation, creativity, and research. So as I close my remarks today, I would end with this. Um, John Bardo, in my 30 months working with him, he challenged me to think differently. He challenged me to be more collaborative. He taught me how to take roadblocks dead on. And he gave me the opportunity to work with him to create a very unique model for higher education for Kansas and for our nation. So I know for all of you, he challenged all of us to think differently. 
He challenged us to be bold, be courageous. He taught us to embrace and celebrate our differences and to understand that change is part of what makes the university have a vibrant future. He often said, WSU is an intellectual giant in the middle of the country, and it's waking up. We are so fortunate that his legacy will live on with all of us, and it will inform many generations to come. His hope and desire was to position this university as a key driver of the future of Wichita. So let's honor him, and let's keep that momentum going. And as we all know, what he would say next, so say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. It's a great day to be a shocker. The second pillar of WSU's mission is to be an essential cultural driver. First, you'll see interview excerpts on this topic. Then Shirley Lefevre and Bobby Berry from the College of Applied Studies will talk about culture change during Dr. Bardo's presidency. Well, the first time I met him was as the Senate president. And I walked in, I was so nervous to be meeting with my boss's 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 boss. First thing we walked in, I, th I thought we were gonna be sitting down at the boardroom table in his office. And he led me to these two chairs that were sitting next to each other. And I thought that was such a powerful statement of his thoughts that we were all equal. We're sitting next to each other, having a conversation, just like two friends. And he was so approachable. That was just how he was, just very approachable. Even though you know I have zero power, zero influence, I'm sitting next to him as an equal. I expected a little bit form more formality just because he's president. And I was surprised by how that wasn't the case. The thing that I like particularly about him is the fact that he did listen and he cared. Uh, and he did his best to strive to make sure that things across campus were equi equitable. And he always had a favorite quote that he used to tell us that if I have to do your job, I don't need you here. And that always resonated with me because he was correct. He would task us to do certain jobs and we would take care of him. And he would ask us, how did this go? Or what could I have done better to make it better? What can you do to change? What can you do to make it, you know, be successful? And that's what I liked about his leadership style. He asked you the question, what can you do to make something better? For me, is I would go in with an idea and said, hey, I think we need to do this. And he would listen and he would go, yes, make it happen. And I was like, what, do you want a report? Do you want you know, six months? And he goes, no, make it happen today. I would leave his office and go, oh, what, what have I done? And OK, we'll do this. And he would be over talking to finance about how we move money around to make it happen. That's the kind of guy he was. He already knew what the vision was. He knew the direction of what he wanted the university to be going. And if you came in and said, I'm going to do that, he put all the resources he could behind you to help you get where you needed to get. And when we start talking about culture on this campus, we can look at it in many facets. But we can only look at it through the lens that Dr. John Bardo saw it through. And he felt like diversity and inclusion was very important. And so he tasked many faculty, staff, and students to engage in diversity on this campus. Dr. Bardo was a big part of the reason why I, I wanted to come to work at Wichita State, because this, this notion of entrepreneurship, this notion of innovation and creativity um, was so appealing to me, because in student affairs, we're a, we're a high touch kind of field. And for me, the question was, what would student affairs look like in that kind of university environment where innovation and creativity and newness um, was part of that culture? I think one of the things he taught me was that higher education is about so much more than just the classroom. Um, so much of it is about community. And he had an amazing gift for fostering community. Um, by creating opportunities. So it wasn't just about creating a forced sense of community. It was very much about creating opportunities for faculty and staff. Dr. Bardot, uh, we are the direct beneficiaries, all the residents of the Fairmount neighborhood, all the visitors of the Fairmount neighborhood. And I believe that we will feel his presence. His presence will remain for an additional 125 years 
on and off campus. It was so fun to have lunch with him and he, where he would share his enthusiasm with which, about Wichita State University. And he was almost like a little boy during these lunches where he would be so excited explaining what was happening at WSU and what was going to happen next and this and that. And it was really fun and exciting to get that exposure and experience and that enthusiasm from, from John. President Bardo truly believed in WSU. He believed in its people and our capacity to respond to needs of those we serve and our ability to make our community a better place. When I first became dean, I very quickly learned he was not about the status quo. He thought big and he challenged the rest of us to think big too. He encouraged us to think about who and how we serve others. And that thinking really resulted in our college engaging in a process of not only changing the name of our college from the College of Education to the College of Applied Studies, but we also began looking at all of the programs and initiatives within our college, and since then have created new or revised programs in every department. However, I think the most important thing to know about the changes that occurred in our college is that it's not unique to the College of Applied Studies. Virtually every college across campus has new and revised programs that are spurring a growing interest in WSU. I remember not so long ago a conversation a group of us had with Dr. Bardo he was so excited telling us about eSports and how it's one of the fastest growing initiatives on college campuses today and what we should be thinking about in terms of programs and opportunities that might be appealing to students and the career opportunities that were likely to emerge for students in these, with these interests. All the while, I'm sitting there thinking, hmm, eSports, is that a lowercase e or a capital E? <laughs> I was focused on the immediate, he was focused on the future. But you know what? We have an eSports team on campus now. And we have new degree programs and applied learning opportunities that are aligned with eSports. I just think this story exemplifies how he approached things. When a new idea, trend, or concept emerged, he always saw the big picture and he saw it as an opportunity for us to respond. Dr. Bardo changed WSU in ways beyond the physical transformation that's obvious. He communicated a sense of urgency and showed us the importance of listening intently and, res and responding adeptly. His lasting influence is evidenced in the attention WSU is getting nationally and it is evidenced by the people who aspire to be part of the university whether that's private industry, community leaders, or faculty, students, or staff. We are all changed, and as a result, WSU as a whole is better, better positioned to respond to needs of our community. Now I would like to introduce my colleague, Bobby Berry, a clinical educator in the College of Applied Studies and the director of the FUSE. Good afternoon. I'd like to share four ways President Bardo's mission for the university to be a culture driver has impacted me personally. I spent 10 years on this campus as a student and a faculty member, and I've watched a culture evolve almost beyond belief. Under President Bardo's guidance and direction, our student population and the faces within administration now more frequently look like me. As a black man in 2019, there is something powerful about interacting and engaging with those who look like you who have similar experiences. The culture change inspires me every day as I navigate through my career in higher education. In 2017, I had the honor of joining the President's Diversity Council. Being able to sit at a table every month with President Bardo and hear his passion for Wichita and the surrounding community was incredible. He was always looking for opportunities to uplift, empower, and elevate those whose voices were often unheard both on and off this campus. 
during the time of getting to know President Bardo, seeing how important it was to him that we lived at our mission and vision at this institution, to me, that was a true definition of a leader. Even within our strategic plan, campus culture and diversity are highlighted. Not only are they highlighted, but they are embedded in the legacy that he has left us at Wichita State. Lastly, Dr. Bardo's notion of culture change has helped me shape my college. I'm the director of the FUSE, which is an outreach initiative for the College of Applied Studies. That role has allowed me the opportunity to go out and engage with nonprofits, create markets-based tuition classes, host fundraisers, and even have a dedicated day of service every semester, which has helped me connect not only the students within my college, but the faculty and staff to the surrounding com community. I am grateful to have known, worked with, and learned from such a visionary. Only two words can truly sum up my appreciation for the legacy that he has left us here at Wichita State. Those words are thank you. The pillar of w third pillar of WSU's mission is to be an essential economic drive for Kansas and the greater public good. First, a short video, followed by John Tomlin speaking about working with Dr. Bardo on this vision. Yeah, I can remember when he approached the Board of Regents on reducing the tuition for out-of-state uh, uh, students based on the uh, I-35 corridor, and uh, I was so impressed with his vision and his uh, ability to apply and implement that vision that uh, I turned to the other CEOs and I said, why aren't you doing this? You know, this is uh, what we need to be doing across the state of Kansas. I would call uh, President Bardo and say, John, you know, should I have known before that project was announced? Should I have had a call on that? And he would say, uh, and he's very disarming, he would say, Blake, you're angry, and if I were in your position, you should be angry. I would be angry. Um, and, uh, and he says, and this will not happen again the next time. Uh, we will be sure you're in the loop. And so uh, that is how the conversation would end. Uh, but certainly, uh, John was full steam ahead to make sure the innovation campus and the vision for Wichita State University happened. Dr. Bardo's interest in moving our athletics and other entities into the American Athletic Conference is because he knew who he wanted to be compared with and who he wanted to be partners with and where this university was going more so than where it is today. Uh, and he drove that move strongly. Dr. Bardo was a unifier. He saw value in the diverse segments of our community. He embraced both the private sector and the public sector. One example was his leading role in the creation of the Law Enforcement Training Center on the innovative campus. That partnership will create economic opportunity for years. Often when I think about Wichita State University, what I think about is just the energy that's on campus, the change, the evolution. It used to be in higher education, you generated a product called students and you hoped that they'd find their way in the world. What Wichita State is doing now under the leadership of John Bardo is really bringing industry onto campus, bringing community onto campus, and giving those students the experiences that make them the perfect fit for industry or community for whatever the issue of the day is. And that's what I think Wichita State is, is unique about. John knew that um, if people are connected to Kansas companies early in the process, uh, they're going to stay here, live here, work here, play here, and make Kansas a more competitive state. You can look at his legacy. Innovation campus, applied learning, applied research, how much our research portfolio has grown, the amalgamation between WSU Tech and WATC. All of these things are examples of what I think Dr. Bardo did, uh, but I think more than anything, if I look about something that kind of cut across all of those, it was, he dared for us to change, dared for us to dream. He was somebody that I think more than anything wasn't satisfied with the status quo. He wanted us to accept what the next challenge was and beat it and then go on to do something else that was great. So I am John Tomlin and uh, so I'm gonna talk about this, this economic driver pillar that Dr. Bardo had. So um, I remember, um, so I, I, I was, I've been at the university for 25 years, and I remember when uh, uh, Dr. Bardock came and said, John, I want you to be a vice president. And I really want this economic driver uh, side. You know, we're about applied learning and economic driver. And um, he said, you know, let's go out for lunch. And, okay, so those of you who know, who know my accent, I'm from West Virginia. So I said, okay, let's go out for lunch. And he said, where do you want to go? And I said, oh, somewhere with meat. And he says, no, let's do Indian. 
or ta. And I'm like, okay, okay you're the boss. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I'm going to regret that, but I will go. So I do not think that for the rest of my life that I will eat at an Indian restaurant or a Thai restaurant and not think about John Bardo first. So actually when we were at lunch, I said, John, and he said, John, this is my last job. He said, he said this is the last job I'm going to have. And, and I asked him, I said, well, at the end of your job, you know, wh wh you know wh wh what do you want to see? And he had the vision, and, and, and he said, you know, John, honestly, he said, when I'm done, he said, I want the university to be stronger than when I took over. And he said, that's what I really want. He says, if I come and when I leave, he said, I want Wichita State to be strong before. And so, you know, then he started the... the um, economic driver piece. He said, John, I want you to lead this. And so I said, okay. I just finished up the Coliseum part, and I said, okay, I can do this. And I said, so he said, John, we're building a dorm on campus. That was his first thing to do is I need, I need students on campus. This commuter campus, we're going to be a real university, and, and we're going to build a, a residence hall on campus. So that means we're going to take down Wheat Shocker. And then we took down Wheat Shocker. He said, John, he says, do you realize that we're one of the few research universities in the United States that doesn't have a research park, research campus. And I'm like, okay. He says, where Wheat Shocker is, he says, I want to build a, a research building there. And he said, I want it to be a partnership building. And he said, I want industry on campus with us. And I said, okay. He said, will you bring me back a design for that? And I said, yes, sir, I will. So I worked hard with the architects, and I brought him back a, a design. It was right in the place of Wheat Shocker. It was one building. And I said, what do you think? He said, I like it, but we're missing the point of what we could be. And I said, well, what do you want me to do, John? I mean, he said, bring me back a bigger plan. And I'm like, okay, I'll bring back a bigger plan. So I sit down with the architects and I said, okay, how many buildings can we put in the footprint of Wheat Shocker? <laughs> I mean, how many buildings can we get? And they said, and they said, I think we can get three, but we have to trim one, one stroke off of the par four. <laughs> and I'm like, so one stroke, that's not bad. It turns that one dog leg par four into a par three. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not a real big, avid golfer, but I think we should be able to do that. I'm going to go present it to him. So I, I, mean, I remember walking into his office, and I rolled out the plans, and it had three buildings and a nice little dry, circle drive around. Parking was still a problem. And, uh, <laughs> and I, 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 talk, I said, what do you think? And I, he says, is there that much space there? I'm like, well, John, I, I have to take one stroke off. He says, I am not going to be the president to take that golf course. <laughs> he says, I'm not going to do it, John, so don't you bring me back. But I don't like this. It still doesn't seem right. And I'm like, okay, I'll go back again. So I, so I worked. I mean, they had a master plan for the university. We rolled out the master plan. And we, then I had a plan that took the entire golf course. It, ha it, it, it had a pedestrian mall. It had restaurants. It had a hotel. And I remember, because I, I, I told my wife the night before, I said, I don't know. I said, he told me he was not going to take the golf course. And I, I I mean, I, I wasn't really, I didn't consider myself his friend there. I was still, he was still my boss. So I rolled this plan out. And I said, John, I said, before I roll this out, and Andy Slap was in there too. Andy Slap was in there. I said, before I roll this out, I said, it is big. He said, that's what I wanted. I said, it fits the mission of applied learning and economic driver. I said, it's what, I said but it's going to be different than other universities have. He said, that's what I want. So I rolled it down on his desk, and I, I still remember his face. He looked at it, and he says, this is it. I said, what? He said, this is it. And I said, so we're going to take the, I said, so we have to take the golf course. He said, I know. We better get Lou in here really quick. Because <laughs> it was, it was going <laughs> to, so that started out, you know. So he already knew that that was, that was the piece. I mean, so. So that started out the process uh, of working. And I, I, I remember 
I, I, mean, we, I mean, he used to call me at night, and we'd be on the phone hours at a time. And Deborah, I'm sorry for all the night, all the hours, but I mean, we were on the phone, and it seems like almost every other night, and 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 talking about this. And he said, John, he said, we need to be relevant. He said, if we're going to do this, we need to be relevant. He says, I need a big name. And I'm like, okay. So I, I, re I remember saying, well, what, how, how big is big? I mean, I, and he says, I need a nationally recognized name as the, as the start of this. And I mean, and that, that's, that's what I went out and searched for. And I remember talking to John O'Leary at Bell Luna, and I, and I laid out. So John gave me the vision, and I laid out his vision to everybody. And I said, this is the vision of what we want to do. I remember John left. He says, I don't, I don't think so, and I don't know if John's in here. John left, and he, came, he called me the next day, and he says, I think we're in. He said, and I, and I called John, and John said, that's the name that I want. And he says, I want it in lights, and I want it up at night. He said, I want every student to see this is what applied learning is about. So that was the vision from the very get-go. And, you know, then we went on, and, said, and I said, okay, John, I mean, this golf course doesn't have any sewer system in it. It doesn't have any water in it. How are we going to pay for it? And that was when John's vision, I mean, I really have to thank the, the, the county and the city because they saw his vision too. With a 12-0 vote, I mean, they gave us the funding to implement this grand plan. So, so I, know that, I, know, I know I saw some county commissioners and some city council people here. Thank you. Because that, you're, I mean, Wichita State is a community. And you are part of the community. And that's just like, this is what Wichita is going to be. And I mean, it, it was just John's vision. So, you know, then uh, one of the things of the Innovation Campus, I remember talking to him when he was at Wesley, and we were talking about the Innovation Campus. We were just, and he was, uh, hey, we were talking about what, what new buildings we might have. And I was like, John, I mean, you know I, I feel like a failure. And he said, John, why do you feel like a failure? I said, I remember watching the, the, after we got the sewer system done and watching Airbus building going up, I was, I was up in the top of X Stadium, and I called John because I just got a phone call, and I said, we have a hotel. We have a hotel. It's going to break ground within six months. He's like, that's what I want. I still don't have a hotel. <laughs> but it may be very soon that you're going to see one break ground. So, so that is why, I mean, I just wanted John to see the hotel break ground. So the other part is John said, John, we're, we're a real university. I mean, to be an economic driver, to be applied learning, our research side, I know you what you do at NIAR. He said, he said I, our research side's very lacking. He said, I've been at other universities. I've been at a research university before. And he said, you need to concentrate on this. He said, I want to see numbers. He said, before I retire, he said, I would love to see Wichita State at $100 million. And I said, John, I've been here a long, I, I, I don't know if that's possible. I said, I, I just think, I mean, I think that vision is, is a bridge too far. And I mean, that, 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 that vision, I said, I will try. So when John started, we were at $52 million in awards. Last year, we were at $104 million. So $104 million. <laughs> so we passed... So we passed the threshold. I mean, and I, I think that if John were still alive, when, when, when I make an announcement come August time frame, it's going to go way more than 104. So it's, it, the vision is still there. And, you know, when we had General Murray here at, at, on Monday, he saw the vision too. Four-star general in, in, in charge of Future Command. He saw it. He's been to other universities. He saw the vision. So, you know, one of the things I also talked to John about is, uh, John, I mean, problems is uh, we may run out of students. Uh, I mean, we, I mean, with the population of Kansas, we may run out of students. And he said, okay, well, we'll get to work on it. He worked with Rick. Rick Muma was, uh, was the instrument of this plan. And he said, you know what? He said, I'm going to come up with, and he, he, he was a great statistician and a great strategic person. He's like, I'm going to go up and down. He, he, ever since he was here, he talked about this I-35 cor corridor with economics. And he's going to, he says, you know what? He says, I'm going to artificially grow the state of Kansas. He said, I'm going to start this I-35 corridor strategy. And we did that. You know, and then the past three, four years, we've grown our student enrollment pulling up the I-35 corridor over 
So that's another huge achievement that brings students in. So then, then one more item is, uh, you know, John and I, we commonly, we know, well, let me go talk. When he started the innovation campus, when I, when, when, I, mean, I took it over, I'm like, John, there's going to be a lot of people that resist this. And he said, John, that is the natural part of change. People resist change. And he says, you need to, you need to go forward. And I was like, okay. And, you know, I think about that now, and it taught me a lot. And I think the analogy I have is like going to the, to the YMCA, going to, going to a gym, and lifting weights. You don't get stronger unless you have resistance. Just think about that. Unless I have resistance, I don't ever get stronger. You know, and I think of that, of, of the resistance that we got. It only made us stronger to the vision. You know, and, and later on, um, I, I, was able, always, I was always able to make John laugh because later, you know, as we started this, resistance, resistance, resistance. And, and you know, we had comments here, comments there. I mean, it did, it, 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 I think it did wear on John a little bit. And I, I, would, I was always able to make him smile because we, cause Andy uh, and, and John and I were set, and we'd say, how much resistance is too much? You know, if you think about that analogy, it's that you try to bench press and take off too much weight. You, without a spotter, you're never going to get it up, and it may crush you. So it's always that fine line on the good resistance and the too much resistance. And John was always talking to me about, John, we can tolerate a certain amount of resistance. And later on, then, then it, you know, we, we, had, we had this resistance, and I said, how much resistance is too much? And then Andy, Andy said, well, John, you know elections. They're only won by 4%. You know, the person who wins the election usually gets 52% of the vote, and the person who loses gets 48%. So that's 48% of the people are resisting. And John said, well, that's way too much. We can never do anything. And I'm, then we said, well, what about a supermajority? You know, what about, what about two-thirds? You know, if we had 30% of the people upset with us, he said, that's still too much. And I'm like, John, we're not going to. He says, I want, I, he said, I want less resistance. Than that. And I said, and that's where I always got him because I said, you know, and we were in a meeting in John's table, and I still remember him looking at me because I, I don't even know where, I, where this came from. I'm like, well, John, Jesus only got 11 out of 12. <laughs> so it's got to be, it's got to be in between the supermajority and 11 out of 12. And he's, he, he laughed, and, and he, he, I would always be able to make him laugh because I would get him on the phone, and he would talk about what happened, what articles being written. I'm like, John, 11 out of 12. <laughs> and he would always laugh. So in closing, you know, I, I mean, I think one of the greatest privileges that I'll ever have in my professional life was working for a man with that vision because he empowered you, just go get it done. Just go get it done. And he had the vision. He had the educate, you know, from, from using an academic world and, and, and how that can be an economic driver was just remarkable. So I'll, I'll always think that's one of my greatest privileges to, to work alongside him. He was, he, he was a great boss and an even greater friend. So uh, I'll end there and, and introduce our next speaker. So under Dr. Barter's leadership, uh, those in the room today and others across the campus have worked tirelessly to reposition Wichita State as this educational, cultural, and economic driver for Kansas and the greater good. Now, Andy Tompkins, our interim president, my new boss, We'll talk about how we sustain that momentum in the months ahead. It's too bad John isn't enthusiastic about anything, isn't it? <laughs> I want you to know I'm deeply honored to be here today, but uh, what do you think? Do you feel like you've celebrated a little bit? Hasn't this been just a touching and moving thing and also a thing of of kind of joy. And I, I, I've had the privilege when I was out front getting to see all the kinds of people in different walks of life that are coming here, former regents, current regents, city, county officials, people from the community. I mean, we have the whole gamut of people that wanted to make sure today was a part of their day. And so I want to start first by saying thank you for being here. It would honor John deeply that you're here, and, and we're so glad you're here. You know, there's abundant evidence that in the too short time he was with us, he positively reshaped this university and helped to raise Wichita State's standing in the community, the state, and the nation. You know, he would always say it wasn't him. 
It was all of you and this supportive community that made it happen. He believed that what you were doing wasn't new. It had its roots in the traditions of Fairmont College, Wichita University, and the leaders that preceded him. That's why he sat at President Clark Allberg's desk and talked with passion about the students on the football team that were the original Wheat Shockers. This summer, as the search process for a new president takes shape, and the Board of Regents have, are looking for a new president of Wichita State, they're going to be hoping it's someone who builds on the work that you and President Bardo have done together these last seven years. I look forward to seeing all of the work you've done continue to the next level in the coming months while I'm with you and under the next new president. In a few minutes, we'll reconvene, as you know, downstairs to enjoy some. We were going to have that outside, but the weather changed a little bit. So we're be, going to be on the first floor here for uh, an ice cream social. But before that, I'd ask you to turn your attention to the video screens one final time to hear Dr. Bardo's friend, Esther Headley, and then a few final thoughts from John himself. And thanks again for joining us today. I was just walking last weekend with my dog Sophie on campus, and I have been on this campus since 1976 as a student, an administrator, and a faculty member. And I'm still in awe looking around when I was walking Sophie on campus of everything that's happened here and the changes that have been made. And I know, John, you're up in heaven looking down on us right now and seeing what's happening at Shocker Nation and the shaking and bacon that's going to be going on in the future because of you. I know you're doing that and you're smiling and laughing and having a good time. John, you will be so missed by all of us in, our, in the university community, in the city, in the state. Thank you for everything that you have done. And as you always said, it's a great day to be a Shocker. You will be greatly missed. All of you, welcome. Uh, glad you're here today. And uh, today, like every day, it is a wonderful day to be a shocker. It's a great night to be a shocker, isn't it? I think it's, uh, that's one of those things. It's, it depends on whether it's just a really, really good night or a really, really, really good night. Uh, it's, uh, it, it never gets worse than that. Well, good morning, everyone, and, and thank you for being here this morning. This is really a great day to be a shocker, isn't it? It's just as pretty as it can be out there. And we're having a great fall semester. WSU is an intellectual giant in the middle of the country that's awakening. It's setting direction and it's moving with purpose. It is that giant that can reach higher than anyone ever expected. You have the capacity to reach the stars. I mean, it really is fun. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I've been invited to speak a lot of other places, but uh, this is the first time I've been invited to speak in front of a congressional committee. Envision, each of you envision, being part of a university where creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, and technology are making the future. My friends, that is Wichita State. Go Shocks. Right. Well, if I could register with a party here, I would register with the Black and Yellow Party mm -hmm. because it's anything for Wichita State. I don't care about party. I don't. It's a real pleasure. Thank yes, you very much. It's a pleasure. Uh, Thank you for your time. Oh, good really to have a chance. What I'm really looking at is how do, we as an, how do we as an institution, how do we as a university encourage the kind of thinking that allows us to come together to really make a bright future for all of us? And uh, for this video, you should know, I'm sitting behind Clark Alberg's desk. Uh, we brought his desk back in here partly to remind me that uh, this isn't new. This isn't different. Uh, this is who we were, and it's who we need to be. Come on, folks, we can do this. Woo! Woo! All right. <laughs> that was fun. One of the things we're trying to do at the university is uh, teach students that it's actually okay to have fun and be in college. Uh, one of the interesting things about Wichita State is that uh, we tend to be very serious. Uh, and I, I really do believe when you're 18, three quarters of the battle is if we can get you to laugh and have a good time, you'll do the rest of it pretty well. Uh, recognize that, that the institution will outlive all of us and generations yet unborn will benefit from what you've done. So thank you again for doing so.
You are the people who are making a difference every day for individual students, for our community, and for our state. You are why it is always a great day to be a shocker. Thank you.